Welcome back aliens, my name is Devin Reddy and in this video we are going to talk about implicit objects in JSP. Now if you have seen servlets, in servlet what we do is if you want to use any object like we have to, we have request object, response object, those objects will be created by Tomcat but then still we have to refer them right. Example in service method we mentioned request object and response object and then if you want to print something we need to create object of print writer. And then if you want to use session, we need to instance, we need to say HTTP session, then session, and then say we get session. Uh, in the in one of the video, we have talked about server context and config. So yes, we are responsible to create at least the reference of it. Now, some people do call it as creating the object, but normally we create reference so that it will be referred. The thing is, in JSP, because JSP says, hey programmer, I'm trying to make your work easy. So it gives you a lot of features, right? Example, you can write a Java code inside HTML. But JSP also gives you some objects to use. Now those are the seven beautiful objects. We have request object, response object, page context. Now there's something new which we have not seen in Servlet. Other than that, we have seen request object, we have seen response, out, session, Application now, okay. Now this application is same as what you use in server context. So when you say server context object, that is referred as application in JSP. And then we have a config object. Now technically this all this thing should be in small data because those are objects, right? So we have response, we have page context, uh, we have out, session, application, config. So these are your seven objects. Now we don't need to go into details here because we, we know these things, right? We are doing this from from session one. We are talking about request object. We are talking about response object. Now the beautiful thing about this is you don't have to instantiate them. Uh, so if I have a JSP here, first of all, let me show you a servlet. So let's say if you have a servlet, you need to create this request object and response object. Uh, also the out one, then config, context, all those stuff. But in JSP, what we can do is we can directly refer them. Example, if I if I want to fetch a value, so I can simply say request. I would say request dot get parameter. And if you can observe, there is nowhere I have I have mentioned about this request object. So JSP gives you this object, so you can you can easily use it. Now the same way we can use response object. Now there is something new here which we have not seen in server, which is page context. So let's 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 spend some time here. Now basically, page context referred to the page. Example, let's say if you are working on JSP and if you want to work with any of the scope or if you want to set the attribute, normally we set the values, we get the values. In fact, in session management also we have talked about it. We can, in one subject, we can assign the value. In second subject, we can fetch the value. That can be done with the help of request object. That can be done with the help of session object or we can do that with the servlet context as well. But let's say if you don't want to go in detail on that, if you just want to work with a page, then JSP offers you a uh, object of page context. Now page context is an object which belongs, to, which is an object of page context. Now using this page context, you can set the value or you can get the value. So you can say, hey, I want to set the attribute and you can set any attribute here so that you, so that you can use this attribute later. Example, if I say, hey, my name is Naveen. So I have assigned the attribute now. So whenever I want to fetch this value, Naveen, I can fetch it with the help of name. So you can do that with the help of get attribute. Now by default, it stays in a page. So the scope of this page context is the same page. Now when I say scope, what it means? Uh, so when you have a session scope, it, it means you can use the value anywhere in this session. So let's say if you open five pages in a particular session, you can access that value in those five pages. When you say request scope, it means the current page and the next page. So the page you are requesting, even that page can have the data in the request scope. But if you talk about page context, it is available only in the current page. But what if you want to specify some, some scope? And we can do that. So we can specify the name, then the value, and then we can specify the scope as well. So if you don't want this to be only in the page scope, you can mention that it goes into session scope as well. So you can use a constant. So we can say page context dot. So we have a constant called as session scope. Basically all this are int value. So session scope itself has an integer value. We can also use request scope if you want. So there's something new which we, which we can use in JSP. Uh, let me just recap. If we talk about scopes, we have different scopes available. We have request, session, subject context, or we, we can refer subject context as application scope. But if you want to refer to the current scope, the only the page scope, you can use page context. Now using page context object, we can actually set the value in different scopes the way we have done here. 
so that you can refer that in some other scope some other pages and then we know how to use session we have seen that in, in servlet then we have application which is nothing but your servlet context and then we have servlet config so we don't have to actually instantiate servlet config the way we have done in servlet if you remember this example we said servlet, con servlet config cg equal to get servlet config you don't have to do this in jsp we can simply use config and it will work so if i say config dot so you can access all the methods here remember this get any get uh, get init parameter so you can directly use config and it will work so that's how you work with uh, implicit objects so the best thing is so uh, jsp gives you all these objects for free you don't have to instantiate them again in, in subsequent tutorials we'll be using all these objects so let's let's not spend more time here we, we will see that in further sessions so i hope you enjoyed this session let me know in the comment section and do click the like button if you enjoyed it and thanks for subscribing